Atheon Times Conflux is the final encounter in the Vault of Glass. This is not a drill, people. This fight requires perfect execution. Atheon does not mess around, and neither should you. Follow these strategies and you'll shatter Atheon into a million pieces. A good team composition should include Defender Titans, Voidwalker Warlocks, and Gunslinger Hunters. Striker and Blade Dancer are not good for this fight and I do not recommend them. Sunsinger Warlocks are okay if you're worried about dying and want to use Fireborn, but Voidwalkers are better. The only element you'll need is Void Damage, Arc and Solar are not needed for this fight at all. You should use the strongest weapons available to you, but try to prioritize Void Damage. Atheon is a two-part fight with multiple phases. I'll be covering the normal mode strategy. Part 1 is where you must wake the glass throne. When you first walk into the throne room, there will be a lot of goblins and hobgoblins scattered around the room, along with a Vex Hydra Gatekeeper. The goal here is to just kill everything in the room. Goblins will spawn from the top of the stairs periodically, they are not a big deal. Kill the Gatekeeper to move to the next phase of the fight, which involves opening the Vex Gates. Before you start the fight, you should divide yourself into multiple teams for Part 1 and Part 2, Outside Gate Team, Inside Gate Team, and Minotaur Team for Part 1, and Relic Holder, Oracle Killers, and Outside Team for Part 2. We'll talk more about the Part 2 team setups in a little bit. For Part 1, the Outside Gate Team will be the ones holding the Vex Gate open. The Inside Gate Team will be going inside the gates, and the Minotaur Team will be killing Minotaurs later in the fight. The goal of this phase is to get both relics out of both gates that you'll be opening up. You should start on the left side gate for reasons I'll cover in a minute. The outside gate team, which will consist of two people, must protect the sink plate from waves of Vex. For this first gate, that includes goblins and Praetorians. The most threatening enemy here will be a Praetorian Minotaur. They'll be the main reason you have trouble or lose the gate. Note that you do not need to stand in the plate after the gate is open, but if it ever gets taken control of by the Vex, you'll need to reopen it. If the Vex ever take full control of the plate, you will have an oracle spawn above the gate that needs to be killed. That is the only job of the outside team, just to keep the gate open. Enemies will spawn out of two doors, called side door and back door. The inside gate team will be the other four people in the group. You'll be going in the left side gate first because the left side gate has two Praetorians that spawn. When entering the gate, do not run or jump through it. You should walk through it because the gates will sometimes bug out, where you will walk through the gate but not be teleported. Being teleported is the most important thing you need to make sure happens. After entering the gate, kill everything and save the gatekeeper for last if you're looking to play it safe. You can definitely burn the gatekeeper instead of killing the adds, but the adds die pretty quickly and you don't risk death nearly as much. After the gatekeeper dies, a relic will spawn at the top of the stairs and everyone will be debuffed with Mark of the Void. Mark of the Void slowly makes your screen go black, and if you have it for long enough, it will slowly kill you. One person should be assigned to be the Relic Holder, and the rest of the team should head back to the gate, but do not go through yet. Everyone's screen will slowly turn black, so the Relic Holder needs to cleanse. However, the cleanse will be on full cooldown when you first pick up the relic, so you'll need to wait for it. Cleanse inside, and then cleanse outside of the gate. The Relic Holder should be the last person out of the gate, just in case someone does not make it through, because the gate will close very shortly after the Relic comes through, and anyone left in the gate will be stuck there for the remainder of the fight. Be aware that if the Relic Holder ever dies, the Relic needs to be picked up immediately, otherwise your entire team will die in about 5 seconds. After you get the first Relic out, Hobgoblins will be added to the mix of enemies spawning from the portals. When your team leaves the portals, you should kill the first wave of Hobgoblins that spawn, so your Minotaur team does not get overrun. The Minotaur team needs to branch off to the main stairs as soon as the first relic comes out because Minotaurs will start spawning at the top of the stairs. A Conflux will spawn in the center of the room at this time. If too many Minotaurs sacrifice themselves, for to be exact, it's a wipe. However, since the Minotaurs are not majors, they're not too bad to take down. One person should be assigned full time to Minotaurs, and the second person, if not killing Minotaurs, should be killing adds that spawn in the back of the room to prevent being overrun. The gate teams should now rotate to the other side to open up the next gate. The person with the relic needs to go into the other gate because you'll be afflicted with Mark of the Void as soon as you enter, and you need cleanses while fighting. The outside gate team should be the same two people. The outside team has the same responsibilities as they did with the first gate, except now you'll have hobgoblins spawning as well, which puts a lot more pressure on both the outside and the inside teams. 
Hobgoblins will also spawn on the other side of the room at the same time. The inside team now only has two people going inside the gate, but this gate isn't as bad as the first one because there are no Praetorians. The non-relic player should be using all of their heavy ammo, hopefully rockets, doing as much damage as possible while the relic holder should immediately use their super on the boss. Try to aim it low so it'll hit the gatekeeper and the enemies at the same time. Clean up the enemies with a jumping shield smash by jumping and hitting R2, and then aiming at the enemies, they should die with one well-placed hit. The non-relic holder should continue pumping damage onto the gatekeeper. The relic holder can get in some quick hits on the boss with jumping R1 hits, but the boss will do a big AoE that'll hurt, so do this at your own risk. Once the gatekeeper is dead, the other person needs to go grab the other relic and then get out quickly. You can also, once again, just opt to burn the boss right away and ignore the adds. Once both relics exit the gate, finish killing enemies by the plate and then everyone should head to the middle conflux. At this time, both gates will activate and Praetorians will start pouring out. Your job now is to just kill Praetorians and Minotaurs for a short time. Relic holders should shield slam as much as possible, but do not risk your own life. After a short time, the conflux will go away, you'll be awarded with some loot, and then part 2 of the fight will start. Atheon will spawn at the top of the stairs and walk down. There are three different roles people will be playing in this fight, Relic Holder, Oracle Killers, and Outside Team. The Relic Holder and Oracle Killers will be grouped together known as the Inside Team. The best Inside Team will consist of Void Walkers and or Gunslingers. Atheon will teleport the three farthest players from him into a random gate, either the orange-brown area or the green jungle area. He'll teleport people about 30 to 45 seconds after he spawns. The inside team should hang out in the back of the room far away from the boss. Try to just hide to be avoid being hit by Atheon because if someone dies before you even start, it can cause a lot of confusion if people are not familiar with the fight. Once the inside team is teleported, you'll be teleported either to the left or right side gate, the left being the orange-brown area and the right being the green jungle area. Our callouts for gates included past, Mars, and or left for the orange-brown area, and the green jungle area we called either future, Venus, or right. Left and right are the sides that those gates are on. The left gate will have three hobgoblins, and the right gate will have two goblins and a praetorian. The first teleport is always the hardest because people will not always have super abilities ready. You'll also have seven oracles spawning while you're inside the gate. Our strategy involves killing the adds that spawn inside the portals. The inside team will spawn right next to the relic once you are teleported. The relic holder should approach the enemies with extreme caution. One person should be assigned only to oracles and the other person should be assigned to kill adds until they're all dead, then go to oracles. For the left side, the hobgoblins absolutely have the ability to kill you very quickly, so have your group activate their immunity shields by shooting them. While their shields are up, the relic holder should run forward and then do a ground slam attack to wipe them out once their shields are down. For the right side, the goblins aren't a big deal, but the praetorian will absolutely mess you up. Make sure the one person assigned to help kill adds has void damage ready to go. This is why Void Walkers and Gunslingers are the best for the inside. Their supers are ranged and can basically instantly take out the adds so that they're a non-issue. Once all enemies are dead, everyone should focus on oracles. The oracles spawn differently on the left than they do on the right, but the left will always spawn in the same order and location, same with the right. The relic holder should just stay on the ground to avoid accidentally flying off the side because occasionally, if you hit an oracle with a relic, you'll just go flying off the map. If you do not kill the oracles quickly enough, everyone on the inside will succumb to the oracles and die, in which the outside team will die shortly after since no one is holding the relic. As you kill oracles, your team should keep moving towards the next gate, so you can exit quickly. You should all stay together because you'll once again be debuffed by Mark of the Void, which needs to be cleansed. Meanwhile, the outside team will be hanging out with Atheon. While the inside team is fighting, Atheon will be standing still, not attacking. The inside team needs to call out immediately which gate needs to be open, left or right. Instead of attacking, Atheon will be summoning supplicants. Supplicants are harpies except these will very aggressively move towards you, and if they get too close they will explode and kill you. Three will spawn at a time and alternate the sides that they drift to. A very simple way to deal with this is to have one person on each side opening the gates and the remaining person stand on the middle floating platform. The supplicants will not go to the middle platform, keeping that player completely safe. 
The portal opener should stand on top of the pillar while opening the gate because the supplicants will not explode on you as long as you stay centered on the pillar. You'll have four waves of supplicants. The fourth wave typically will be spawning as the inside team comes out, so the outside team should call out the supplicants before the inside team leaves the gate so they don't get blown up. The fourth wave should be cleared as soon as possible. A Warlock Nova Bomb at their spawn point will help immensely. Once all oracles are dead on the inside, you will be buffed with Time's Vengeance. Time's Vengeance is a 30 second buff that instantly refreshes your super and grenade whenever you use either and gives you an immense damage buff. As soon as the buff comes, the inside team needs to get out of the gate as soon as possible and head to the back of the room. All supplicants should be killed as fast as possible so you can start damage on the boss. The person on the outside standing on the middle platform should find a safe place to attack because that platform is wide open to attack. Supers should be used, grenades spammed, and weapons shot. The relic holder can keep blasting their super at the boss, just make sure your super meter refreshes before you attempt to use it because it's not instant and you might send yourself flying off the edge. It is possible to bring Atheon down in as little as three gate phases, possibly even two. A strategy I like using on this boss is to have a Defender Titan, usually myself, get up real close to the boss, pop a lot of damage on him, and then use Ward of Dawn. The boss will usually stay aggroed on the Titan up front, allowing the rest of the team to deal damage with minimal issues. While the boss is over 50% health, Atheon will use a slow rate of fire, allowing the Titan to peek out of the shield to toss a grenade or fire some shots. When the boss is below 50% health, it'll fire at a much faster rate, so you shouldn't leave the shield at all while the boss is on you as the Titan. If Atheon ever switches target, it needs to be called immediately. This is a very aggressive strategy that should be used with extreme caution. Another strategy is the middle platform strategy. The Relic Holder's cleanse is also a barrier that allows damage to leave it, but not get inside. What this strategy does is have everyone group up on the barrier, which lasts indefinitely thanks to Time's Vengeance, and shoot the boss. For bonus damage and safety, have a Weapons of Light Ward of Dawn behind everyone. At around 3 seconds left, the inside portal team should go to the back of the room, while the outside team walks into the Ward of Dawn until Atheon goes passive. However, there is a chance of splash damage hitting you off the left side pillar of the platform, and I have seen a few people die while inside the barrier. I'm not sure if this is due to splash damage or a bug or what. It seems that if shots hit the barrier, they do nothing, but if they hit a surface, they'll still do damage. However, I don't use this strategy very often, if at all, so I couldn't tell you for sure. If you do not have any Defender Titans and don't want to use the middle platform strategy, just find a place to hide and shoot the boss. Once Time's Vengeance wears off, this entire process repeats itself until the boss is dead or you all die. Atheon enrages after about 6-7 to seven teleport phases, so you do have a limited amount of time to defeat the encounter. Anyone who is on the inside team should make sure that they have a super ready for when they are teleported, because it makes dealing with the enemies inside trivial, especially having a Voidwalker. Launching a Nova Bomb at the enemies makes very quick work of them. Having a Voidwalker on the outside makes dealing with the final wave of supplicants very easy, as they can Nova Bomb right where the supplicants spawn. If you only have one Void Walker, send them with the inside team and then when they come out of the gate, if it's safe, have them launch a Nova Bomb and immediately back off. Killing the fourth wave of supplicants quickly lets your team focus damage and all of their attention on the boss. The only difference between the normal mode and the hard mode is that on hard mode, the outside team will become detained as soon as the inside team is teleported and you'll need to shoot off the detained before doing anything. It works exactly like Templar, so shotguns can come in handy. The other differences are that everything is just a level 30 enemy, and you can't be revived if you die, but those apply for the entire raid. Loot from Atheon on normal mode can include the following. The Chatter White Shader, a Legendary Ship, a Legendary Sparrow, Atheon's Epilogue, a very high rate of fire auto rifle with void damage, Vision of Confluence, a solar damage scout rifle, a piece of raid armor except for the helm, and a chance at a random exotic. This fight is all execution. If there are any deaths with the inside team, you will lose a chance to get a lot of damage on the boss and possibly die to oracles. If there are any deaths on the outside team, the fight is still somewhat manageable, so do not panic if someone dies on the outside. Atheon is an incredibly fun fight. It is not about gear, it's not about weapons, it's all about your team's communication and ability to deal with a lot of stuff happening all at once. I hope you enjoy the fight, 
I know I did. Good luck in there, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.